Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship his holy name, I will worship his holy name. I'm gonna worship His holy name. Oh, I'll worship His holy name. Well, welcome back to another episode, Liberating Truths. The liberating truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Understanding the gospel is what liberates us. It never gets old. It's always new. And so we are now in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'll read a few verses this morning. Now please remember to subscribe, share, and comment. And also put on the notification bell. So that when I am on, you will be able to be notified the times that I am on. Okay? So again... You can look on the channel for all the videos on Roman chapter 7. Right now, we, when I started to do um, the series, I started at Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 6, I think. A uh, little on Romans chapter 7. Um, so it's hard to start in the middle of the book. So I will maybe have to go over the first um first chapters one two and three but more likely i will do an overview of those but we're in romans chapter eight now as we learn in romans chapter seven <coughs> sorry it was all about dying um to the law seeing ourselves as dead to the law as the gospel presents it that we are dead to the law we are alive to god through Christ, because we are no longer married to the law, as the illustration Paul made in Romans chapter 7, right? We are no longer married to the law and inclined, obligated to obey because we are dead to the law. Now, does, that does not leave us without any leading. Very important. That doesn't lead us without any leading towards God. As a matter of fact, being dead to the law releases us because the law um the law was powerless to do um to perform holiness and, and righteousness. So we are released from the law, but we're married to Christ. And now the result of which um is that we bear fruit unto God. Yes? We are now in a proper relationship with God through Jesus Christ. This is something Paul is repeating and putting, in an, putting it in another way for us to understand um, our relationship with God and be at rest. Okay, So now that we are released um, from the law, well, Paul shows the, 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 the um, inadequacy of the law producing righteousness in us throughout the book and the frustration, right? The things that I want to do, I find myself not doing. And if I do not what I do not want to do, it is no longer I will do it, but sin living in me. I know that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So you can see the struggle, the despair um, right there. But no, Romans chapter 8. Uh, Romans chapter 8, we're going to look on um, a few verses. Right, so Romans chapter 8, get out your Bibles, look at the word. There's something about you looking at the word, right? You're looking at the word there from where you are. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit who gives life. Has set you free mm. from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. Amen. 
And so he condemns sin in the flesh. Right? He condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met. Righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit. So we'll stop there. It's now um, 1 to 4. So Paul is saying now, he shows you the struggle. He shows you the despair, the impossibility. And now he's saying, look, being married to Christ, because you're in union with Christ, and this is a term that he used now that you're in Christ, he says, therefore, therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. You're now in Christ. And you cannot be condemned because Jesus took your condemnation. Jesus took the punishment um, of the judgment of God that sin occurred, that was um, for us. He took the judgment. And because he took the judgment of God upon himself, as Corinthians says, he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So he took your judgment, every part of it. He took our punishment that we deserved. But now we're in Christ. So he says, therefore, Paul says, therefore, there is now no condemnation. The condemnation that is not ours is not that God says, you know, oh, you know, let me just let them off. You know, let me just not discipline them. No, it was because Jesus was condemned in our stead. And that is a reason that you are not condemned. So based on Jesus' death, the atonement, the cross, we can be confident because God God himself does not have double jeopardy. And that is the idea that in law, um, when someone is, is, is punished for a, 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 um, a crime, he cannot be, when he's, when he's judged and punished for a crime, he cannot be um, judged and punished again for the same crime. Right? And Jesus Christ was judged and punished Though he was innocent, he was judged and punished for our sin. Our iniquity fell upon him. Isaiah 53. He was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. Your iniquities, if you're watching. My iniquity. He's a scapegoat. He's the one God punished instead of us. And Jesus willingly went to the cross. Not my will, but your will be done even though it was um painful even to even to even though it was a um a heavy weight of our sin and our burden our burden he took upon it upon it himself and he brought it to the cross so there is no condemnation because Jesus was condemned in our stead. But because he's the son of God and he's holy and righteous, he rose from the dead by the power of God. Because through Christ Jesus, now he tells you there is no for, therefore now no condemnation to those, those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free. Right? Now, this is an understanding also of how the Holy Spirit works or operates. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free. Now, this is something that we need to know. Remember, Paul talked about, do you not know? It's so important to know our standing, our position as believers. Because if we do not know our position, we do not know our identity. And if we don't know our identity, 
we cannot act appropriately we cannot walk holy we cannot walk righteous so we must know what what is, what is provided for us in the cross in the burial and in the resurrection and what comes to us through the holy spirit the holy spirit ministry is to bring and to um, show us what jesus did that's the holy spirit ministry is to show us that jesus says that the holy spirit will come and he'll show you things to come he will minister to you and so the holy spirit ministry is to show us what jesus did because through christ jesus the law of the spirit so paul is talking about another law you know the law that governs earth um us it, as we walk on earth is different from the law in space the law of gravity right you go in space you need to wear certain things for you to operate in space well paul is saying that you have escaped that realm now you're in another realm of the spirit believers are in the spirit believers are in christ and being in christ you're in the spirit right now there's a difference between being in the spirit and um being filled with the spirit you every believer is in the spirit by position but not everybody is filled with the spirit daily and so paul says be filled with the spirit but he never told believers to get in the spirit in the sense of being in the spirit there's a difference between being filled in with the spirit and being in the spirit those who are in the spirit are told to be filled with the spirit so that's a difference right that's dif dif differentiated in the scripture be filled with the spirit um, because through christ jesus the law of the spirit who gives life the law of the spirit who gives life um the life of christ the life of god has set you free has set you free past things right because of you now your relationship with christ your union with christ you have been set free past things you have been set free and this is something that we need to see you need to see in order to um, stop living on the law level right uh, you have been set free so stop living on the law level which result in fruit um death in in actions you know paul will talk about um um death and use death in many ways but what it means is like you are dead works you produce dead works under the law system of the law not that you don't work but the works are dead and um we want good 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 works good fruit and here he says you are now being set free from the law of sin and death why you've been set free from the law of sin and death because you are now in christ you're identifying with christ now when you go through the book of romans chapter 7 you will see that the apostle paul at the end of the book he said you know who will deliver me from this body of death i thank god through christ jesus Oh, wretched man that I am, who's going to deliver me? Who is going to set me free from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He cries out to God at the end of the book. Before that, it was I, me, I, I, you know, I, you, you see, I, 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 I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to do this right throughout the Romans chapter 7 until he comes to the last verse he said oh wretched man that I am I cannot do this I am so frustrated trying to keep up but Jesus delivered me and then in Romans chapter 8 now he says that we are not condemned because Jesus took our condemnation he delivers us when he con was when he was condemned by his condemnation by his payment of our sin payment debt to god what we owe that we could not pay we are free we are free because jesus took our burden and our guilt and the penalty of debt that was we were supposed to pay that is that is what that is how we are free 
but now we are in union with him and so that we now bear fruit unto God because we died to sin and we are alive to God through Jesus Christ. What the law was powerless to do, it could not make us bear fruit unto God. The law was powerless to do, it was powerless to do, and it took because it was weakened by the flesh. God did, amen, God did by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and so condemned sin in sinful humanity, and so he condemned sin in the flesh. Amen. And verse 4 says, In order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us. Amen. The righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. So right now, as a born again child of God in union with Jesus, who have the Holy Spirit, the Bible calls you righteous and holy. And what that is saying is that your motivation, what you really, really want to do from your spirit is all good things. Right? You, you want to do good things because the righteous requirement of the law might, is now in you because you've died. You're a new creation. If any man therefore be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are on a higher level. You know, you hear talk about, oh, you know, some pastors are so and pray and say, you know, you need to go on a next level. Well, the scripture says, Jesus has made you to be on another level, the other level. In him is the other level. So rejoice in the Lord today. I thank you for watching. And so please remember to subscribe, share, and comment, and put on the notification bell so you may receive this encouragement and I pray these words will be words uh, that liberates you, that sets you free um, as I um, share these words today. And I pray that you will have a godly day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.